Hi, this is Steve from Audix. Today we're here to talk about the TM2, test and measurement fixture for testing in-ear monitor systems. Today we're using it in conjunction with Rational Acoustics Smart measurement software, which of course is capable of executing a transfer function. There's other software out there, pretty much any software uh, that can be set up for a transfer function measurement would be perfectly fine to use in this configuration. For an interface today, we're using the TF1 uh, digital console from Yamaha. Our previous videos, we showed it with a simple two-channel little desktop interface. This is just kind of taking that to the next level. With Yamaha TF1, we've got uh, 32 by 32 plus the ability to pick up uh, USB uh, from the output of the main mix bus, the main left-right bus. So a total of 34 outputs can be referenced within Smart. Let's start with the noise input. Uh, so noise coming from Smart has to be configured as an output device. We're using channel 16 as that send from Smart. We've identified that right here. Taking a look at the actual channel, uh, we have our head amp gain, uh, digital gain set at zero. Of course, the USB in because we're receiving the USB from Smart for that noise input um, right there. So we want to make sure that is engaged. And uh, looking back at the rest of our settings, direct output, of course, is off because this is only an input. Uh, we're not referencing anything back out of that noise uh, input directly. Uh, head amplifier, again, at zero, no EQ, no gate, no comp. Let's look at our input devices. So for, for transfer measurement, we need to have a measurement input and a reference measurement. Our measurement input here is the TM2. We'll take a look at how that is set up. Uh, the TM2 requires 48 volts, so we have that engaged. Analog gain is at plus 25. That's a nice setting to start with. I have found um, it, um, it gives us plenty of headroom for a typical test. You may find your adjustments would differ slightly, but plus 25 seems to be a good setting for me. Scrolling back down over here uh, in Smart for our reference measurement, we're picking off the console right input. So um, to expand back on the TM2 input, how we have that routed, I have the direct uh, out on, and we have that set out set up as pre-fader so that any, um, any adjustments that we make to the, um, uh, that, that we make to the fader will not adjust the overall sound. the console right uh, output that's being received right there on 34. So that's our pick point for, uh, for our noise. So with that being said, we are set up. Inputs and outputs are, are configured. Let's talk about calibration. Calibration is a good step to do. Uh, it does require a, a, a calibrator of some sort. Typically these output uh, 94 dB. Some have other settings uh, available on them. We're going to set this one up 494 dB, and uh, we have a, an adapter that comes with the TM2 that's set up to work with industry standard calibrators. We have a 1K tone at 94 dB. We're going to put that on and go up to the configuration setting within Smart for amplitude calibration. Select the TM2 again, which is in channel 15, and run the calibration routine. It'll take a moment, go through and do its thing. And at that point, we click OK. And now we have a reference. We know, uh, Smart knows, <laughs> that we are feeding 94 dB um, as a reference from this calibrator. And therefore, whatever dB reading that we're getting as we start testing our in-ear monitors, uh, we know that's going to be accurate. What we see is what we're going to get. Now, the TM2 comes with uh, three other adapters to fit standard size IEMs. This one works with the one we're going to be testing today, which is the Audex uh, A10. So uh, in this particular configuration, we're testing just like we might be doing at a live show. Uh, we have a wireless system here for, uh, uh, for the in-ear monitor system. We're actually going to test with and without that in line, start with, and you can see pretty quickly uh, when we uh, go directly to the console, 
uh, what the differences are. They're not extreme, but uh, you know, every, every step in the signal chain is gonna li likely make a slight difference. In this case, we can uh, evaluate, evaluate what the wireless system is doing to the overall signal. So uh, the wireless transmitter is receiving its signal from an auxiliary send. I have that set up here. You can see it, IEM mix left and right uh, out, of, uh, out, of these, um, out of this uh, auxiliary send one and two respectfully. And we have our noise set up to feed that. Click that here. We see auxiliary one and two uh, has been engaged there for our noise. So let's go ahead and turn on the noise. We've configured it so we should have noise through our IEMs. And we hear that. We've calibrated, so we know now that when we put this guy on that the SPL calibration will be pretty accurate. And it is, it'll settle down here. We have it on slow response. So we're putting about 117 dB into these, uh, you know, through this system here right now. One thing to note, our meters about minus 12 to minus 15, we'll come back to that in a minute. Let's go ahead and run a transfer function. So to start our transfer function, we'll want to find our delay setting, insert our delay setting and begin the transfer function. There we go. Look at our impulse response. We got a nice uh, positive uh, response in the graph there. So we know our polarity is correct. Frequency response wise, and we'll show this in a moment, um, you know, the wireless system will put a high pass filter in, most any wireless system will. And uh, not sure what that is going on with our coherence right there, but it shows our frequency response. We can save that. We'll just call this uh, IEM wireless, save that. Phase response is okay. Let's take a look at the system though without the wireless, uh, wireless system in, in line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up and just plug into the headphone jack of the console and I'm gonna cue the, uh, the same send that we were sending the wireless unit. Turn our noise back on here. Bring down our cue mix so it's not so loud. And let's reset our reset our delay because latency is going to be different directly through the console. Find it, insert it, and you'll see our phase wrap because the high pass filter is gone. Our phase wraps a little cleaner. Our frequency response looks pretty good. And let's compare that to what we just measured. Uh, a little bit different amplitude as one would expect. A little bit different thing in the high, high end where we're starting to lose coherence. But generally speaking, through the important part of the spectrum, if we line up these two amplitude wise, pretty consistent. So I wouldn't be worried about this IEM system. Uh, it looks like it's doing its job, the wireless system that is. And uh, yeah, we're, we're in good shape. Stop our pink noise here. And let's talk a little bit more about SPL. So again, our SPL is calibrated. Uh, we can tell pretty quickly. Again, let me just turn our noise back on for a moment. We'll go back to the the wireless transmitter system. Clear these traces. Reset our delay setting because we have uh, the wireless system back in line with it again now. Still looking good with an impulse response. There's our frequency response. I'll bring it down just so we can see it a little bit better. And at this moment, uh, we're putting about 117 dB uh, through these IEMs. We know that because we've calibrated it. If we take a look at our meters on the digital console, we're minus uh, 15 peaking into uh, minus 12. Uh, we've got plenty of headroom and almost corresponding meters on the wireless transmitter, so we know that uh, that's pretty good. So 117 dB. We'll stop our pink noise for just a moment and also shut off the transfer function, clear that out. Let's just pay attention to just the SPL meter for a second. I'll play back some music. Uh, I've got uh, input one and two back here, routed also to that same auxiliary send that uh, is feeding the, the wireless transmitter. Let's play back a little bit of music here. And I hear it playing there. We can cue it just to uh, take a listen. Got to bring back up my cue mix. There we go, there's our level. So that particular uh, bit of music right there, our meters are a little bit lower. And since music, of course, has a different crest factor than pink noise, 
we're hovering around 110. Still pretty loud, but uh, we know how loud it is. You'd be able to at that point, if you've got a virtual sound check uh, setting and could play back the previous night, and with those same auxiliary sends engaged, you could tell pretty quickly what you were sending that artist. But also, I think that it's kind of important to understand what metering represents what SPL for that performer. So again, minus 20, minus, uh, minus 15 to minus 20, if we bump that up just a little bit here, go back to this input, select aux one and two, bring that up. And watching our SPL meter, uh, we get to 120 pretty darn fast. So with this less compressed music, um, we're getting up to, you know, peaking at minus nine. So we know that as we're getting towards the top of the meter on this particular console, when we queue up that auxiliary sin, that, uh, you know, that we're pretty loud. We're about 119 peaking at 120 dB, louder than most performer would want for any given length of time. That's another handy feature uh, we feel the TM2 is going to address. Performers are going to want what they're going to want in regards to their in-ear monitor mixes. Um, you're not going to tell somebody how, how loud to have it, but if uh, you got an artist that is concerned about hearing loss, being able to give them a reference of how loud is loud, I think is an important thing and another great aspect of the TM2. So test and measurement of IEMs, um, kind of the, the workflow that we would see is the artist hands over the IEMs when they're new or at the start of rehearsals before a tour, make a uh, transfer function measurement, save it locally or save it to the cloud. And that's your reference for, uh, for the rest of the tour, being able to come back and say on a nightly basis that your IEMs are performing uh, even with the wireless system in line uh, like they were day one of performance. Um, great tool. It's available from Audex now. You can learn more at audexusa.com. I'm Steve Young. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.